I did a video a while back on AC versus DC flyback transformers and I had a question come up. Is the voltage that comes out AC or DC? And the true, very true answer is it's neither. It's actually a magnetic volt. So what do I mean when I say magnetic volt? Well, it's not AC or DC coming out. So anytime you get one of these transformers, you're going to have to go back to rectify to DC, then back to AC to get an a true AC out of it. Or you can rectify just as a DC and get a DC signal out of it. Either way, you're going to have to rectify it. This right here that comes out of the flyback transformer is a different energy altogether. For example, let's take a wind turbine. You can make one by taking a ceiling fan and converting it into a generator. But here's the interesting part. Let's watch the conversion. This is the inside of a ceiling fan. As you can see, there's two rows of bundled wires. Now, in this video they'll take out one of them, but it's not necessary. You can leave both in there. What they actually do in a normal ceiling fan is what's high and what's low on your ceiling fan is dependent on which coil you are actually turning on which row of coils I mean the sequence goes north south north south and that's good for both sets of coils now all that's needed to make the conversion is you now must put magnets on the outside ring now all you have to do is space them far enough apart. You can put any dielectric material in, be in between, which means plastic, styrofoam, anything like that that doesn't conduct electricity. All you have to do here is identify which wires connect to which set of coils. Again, one was high, one was low on your power when you turned on the fan. So now each set of coils in each row have their own power for the two wires. So connect those to a set of LEDs and we can turn it on by spinning the outside and making the generator work. Now that you've figured out which wires are which and you put in your magnets you can go ahead and close everything back up and let's spin it and what you'll see is the light bulb turn on. At this point you're probably wondering what do you mean by magnetic volt now. We see this thing spinning, we see the multimeter turn to AC and we see an AC sine wave coming out of it. The problem is it's an unstable sine wave and it's not truly AC. Please notice the square object right there where all the wires are plugged into it. That is actually a full bridge rectifier. It is a conversion to DC voltage. As you can see he added a DC to DC converter what that actually is, is he's controlling the volts and the amps through the little screw dials on this thing. And he's getting the correct amount to make the, all the LEDs light up properly, equally. If you just wanted to stop at DC power, you could. Or, you can convert it one more time into AC. However, the original AC coming from the generator will not work as regular AC because it's inherently unstable because it's not actually AC. Let's take a look at another example where I can show you that everything isn't AC or DC. Here we have a generator that's made of plastic. This gentleman's name is Gerard Morin and he's on YouTube as well. And he's built this generator with plastic and there's aluminum in there. There is no iron in this except for the magnets themselves. He has a neodymium magnet that is one inch wide, it is four inches long, and he stacks several of them on top of each other on each side. So there's four sides that go in there. And he does that right in the center to make the magnetic field. What it essentially does by removing the iron core from this whole thing is it makes the voltage different coming out. It no longer behaves like a standard generator. Now that you know exactly what his generator is made of, let's see the experiment that he does. He's going to try to light up a floodlight. The original power source, 110 volts AC. As we can see here, his generator has started up the light. 
Now, I don't think he's getting 110 volts out of that generator. Matter of fact, I know he isn't. So let's go ahead and watch. He's going to put a multimeter on it and show you exactly what he's getting out of it. He's showing that he's getting 38 volts of AC coming from his generator and it actually turns on the floodlight. There's no way that that could be possible. The circuits won't turn on if it doesn't hit a certain capacity if you don't hit the right voltage. So what exactly is he doing to make this turn on that's so different in this generator? To figure out the answer to this, you got to go back to how you see voltage. I see it personally as the amp goes through the inside of the wire and the volt travels on the outside of the wire. I say that so that you can understand this concept a lot easier. What happens in a circuit is the amps hold the voltage inside so that it travels through every circuit. When you remove the amps, it allows the voltage to flow over the circuits and around them. He calls it a smart volt. What it actually is, is just a high voltage that goes and flows over everything, or a static volt. You can call it a magnetic volt, like I do. Static volt, magnetic volt, same thing. It's a smart volt. It goes around everything, goes straight to the LED, and turns it on, just like the ceiling fan that was converted earlier. Let's go ahead and take a look at another example. This right here is a simple circuit. It's a power source, 19 volts, 3.5 amps, goes right into a ZBS, then that goes into a flyback transformer. And in this case, we consider this AC. Now that I've explained what this is, let's go ahead and see how it works. We take the power source that is DC, we put it into the ZBS. The ZBS has two MOSFETs on it. It converts into a mimicked AC signal. Not an AC signal, a mimicked AC signal. From there, it goes right into the iron core of the transformer. What this actually is going to do is it's going to create heat in the iron core. It's going to be a pulsed heat. Now, that's all it's doing right here. A very, very fast pulsed heat is what it's creating. Then, what happens is, is the little bobbin part here that has all the wire on it, it then takes that heated signal and it converts it into power. And it takes one magnetic field over the other as each one splits and it combines them to make a higher voltage. So why is any of this important based on the topic that we're talking about today? It's because you think you need a ZVS to drive this thing. You don't. You just need a very fast switching signal that goes into the AC flyback. That's it. You don't need a ZVS. You don't need AC to DC conversion. You simply need a pulse signal that goes in there and it creates heat. If you can get that from any source that you want, you can make this work. You can get it from a capacitor that switches fast, okay, that loads and unloads it quickly. You can get it from any other source. As long as it has that function, this will work. Knowing that small bit of information right there, now look at it again. Ask yourself, we know what's going in is anything that pulses and makes heat, so is it AC or is it DC? That's where the problem comes in for most people. They look at what the circuit is before this as a ZBS and they classify it based on that. What they don't understand is how to make the energy different that goes into it that would make the same signal coming out of it. That's the incredible part here. It actually tells you the answer right in itself. It's not AC or DC. The only thing that's happening is we're getting magnetic fields that overlap each other. Therefore, the energy coming out is a magnetic energy. I did a video a while back on this one right here. This is actually a flyback transformer that's made of stone. Now, a lot of people out there say that it can't work, that some of the stuff isn't conductive. I will tell you this. If you put down the book and you put down all of the common knowledge on this stuff and go back to the originators of this stuff, like Tesla, you can start to understand why it would work and why it does work. When you look into the books on this stuff, 
and you start reading about it, everything's classified in AC and DC. Rarely do they ever understand anything more than that. And what you're actually doing is converting that knowledge of AC and DC and trying to apply it to something that you cannot apply it to because you're not seeing it as the magnetic volt that it is. So let's take this from a fresh perspective. The actual thing in here that is magnetic is the basalt. It's dried lava. What does lava actually contain? Well, anything that lava comes into contact is what it retains inside of itself. Run over some gold, it takes the gold in. You run over some silver, it takes the silver in. Take in some copper, that too. It also takes in plenty of iron. Therefore, it is completely conductive based on where you're getting it from. Is all basalt the same? No, it's not. It really depends on where you got it. You can go to Hawaii and get some basalt that's run over some cars, some lava out there, and find out what's in it, and use it. It works just fine. I commonly say there's iron ferrite, so that people can understand, okay, I know what iron ferrite is, I know what iron is, and we can see the conductivity. But that's not all that's in it. It's everything. This is one of the best rocks to ever use if you want to make something that's conductive. You can read it in a book, you can read it in papers, and it'll tell you that it's conductive. There are some out there that say, no, no, it's an insulator, it's an insulator. Oh my God, it's an insulator. Well, it really depends on what's in it. If it does not contain any iron in it, then yes, it would make a great insulator. However, when it does contain iron, it is an absolutely conductive material. I hope in the examples that I've shown here today that you've actually seen some differences in here and it makes you question some things. I know the conventional wisdom is AC and DC. I get it. I'll leave a video attached to the end of this one and you can watch it and be happy about AC and DC. What I'm trying to get across here, I want to understand rare earth energy. I want to make something different. In order to do that, you have to understand the process is different. You have to understand voltage differently. We make AC and DC. They are man-made. This earth has been here with voltage around it long before that. And in order to understand that, we must now take the leap from what we've built and what we've known to what the earth actually shows us and what's actually true. I want to thank everybody for watching today. I know there wasn't a whole lot of video in there, mostly audio and mostly pictures, but uh, thank you again for watching. And if you like what you saw here today, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much and have a great day.